Hey guys, local 88 here, and today I bring you some more World of Tanks. Now, in this video, I'm going to be platooned up with Great Dane, known as Cabbage Master. And as you can see, we're going to be playing on the Arctic region map. Now, in this replay, I'm going to be highlighting the Waffentrager Alpha Panzer Fear 4 once again. Now, I've done a replay on this previous before, but this one's a little bit something special, as obviously the title suggests. And you can see how that pans out as the video progresses. Now looking at the matchup itself, it's a pretty even game, they've got some good tier 9s, uh, um, but this, the actual team balancing works out pretty even. Now uh, the first stage myself and uh, Great Dane was pretty unsure where to actually go. Now we decided to go up to the north for being tank destroyers, but with the looks of what was happening to our south, we decided we had to relocate down there so we could cover that flank, due to the fact that the E75 the was most likely going to be coming from that way. And we had to deal with it. So once again speaking on the Waffentrager. This tank I absolutely adore. The one thing I mainly adore is this fantastic gun. 276mm penetration. 560 average damage. It's just incredible. And it takes me around about 11.26 seconds to reload. So it's really effective gun. Now somehow I got spotted there. Must have been a light tank. There you go. RU251. Spear Panzer. Now between me and Great Dane, the average damage from our tanks is about 1300 damage. That's between us both hitting an average damage roll at the same enemy. With this T30 being alongside us as well, we've got quite a lot of firepower on our corner. And the only thing we can really do at this moment is just wait. Great Dane moves down to have a look, takes a fire from E75 but gives him a big hit. Now he takes a hit in return. He flanks well. Now straight away, we're putting in a pretty bad situation. Great Dane's down to 52% of his health, took quite a lot of hits. I can't really push too much far forward because I'm going to be too fully exposed and also I've got issues with my gun depression. So one of the reasons why a lot of the times I will use this, use this tank backwards so I guess more depress gun depression over the rear, and also I can I'm quicker to escape. Now I'm focusing on this corner to see if any of the enemy tanks come round here, while Great Dane keeps an eye on the T20. We're hoping that the North is going to win and push around, and all we've got to do is basically hold. Even though we won't get much done in the game, as long as we win, that's the only thing that we're, what really matters to us at this point, to be fair. Now the enemy on this side seems to be holding. Looks like the Type 61 and the E-35 are in a platoon together, so they are working together, which is quite worrying. The North isn't doing as well as we would have hoped. And once again, all we can do is pretty much wait. Now it looks like an AMX-5120 is trying to flank around to our west. But I look, I can see on the minimap there's an SU 1244 on the ridge line behind me. It looks like the T30 is also trying to get a position. I'm trying to find a better spot so I could try and get gun depression. I seem to have found it. Great Dane once again moves forward. I'm urging him at this point to be careful. E75 pretty much could kill him. Now it's asked me to keep an eye on the side of the T20 while he looks down towards E75. Well, the problem is while we're holding, it looks like the North is completely f is, is failing and the centers also have lost some tanks there as well. A Wild Tiger 2 moves forward, takes a big hit, decides, nope, not doing that, pulls back. At this point, I urge Great Dane to move in, try and take a shot off while the enemy's reloading. Don't know if he misses there or bounces, unsure. I decide to move in, it's my time now to shine. Aim for the E75 first, he's a bigger threat. Big hit there, low roll though. Great Dane once again doesn't hit the target. A 
take a massive hit. The engine always goes on this tank. That's one thing which is a pain. Another good hit. Very accurate gun, this. Repair the engine so I can back up out of the way. Now we've got these guys in the room. We have to keep the, f the pressure up on them. Artillery's got zeroed in. Also see that there is uh, another Waffenträger Alf Panzer Fear coming from the rear, which is just taken out of T-30. It sounds like he's got the 155mm, maybe, 150mm, something like that. I can't remember the calibre of that gun, but he's basically got the big-ass gun on his, which could shave off average of about 750 damage to my tank. Now, I need to pull back and try and deal with this guy. He's basically just wiping out his artillery. Takes a massive hit on him, and now he's a one shot for me. I just need to make sure I hit him. And he's down. So that takes the pressure off our rear and off our cap. ST1 is still alive up north, but in a lot of trouble. Once again, we're on the defensive. And I notice the ST1 has been taken out, so our north is completely exposed. At this point in time, Great Dane is going to be one of our last stands. Um, it's not looking too good. There's some strong tanks going to be coming from our rear soon. And obviously, the tanks coming from the front. E75 has been a little bit hesitant due to the fact he's took some massive hits. But with the amount of reload and the lack of armor special for me... Uh, it's going to be a struggle to take all these guys on. Nevertheless, I decide to move further to the north. Uh, try and find a position where I could tr try and cover this angle. At the moment, I'm under the impression that they're not going to come from the west, but either from the south or the north. So I'm going to cover this side while Great Dane looks to cover the south side. With the Tiger 2. I'll pull up behind this artillery. Which luckily takes out the T-20. Good shot. Now I must say for what you're going to see coming up, the artillery does help me out quite a deal and do fend them for themselves quite a lot as well. Splash damage there from enemy artillery. Our Tiger 2 is now down, so Great Dane is on his own on that corner. It's Type 61 and the E75. Lo and behold, comes a challenger. But, once again, artillery defends itself, takes it out. Now, looking at the map itself, it looks like there's a Jag Tiger 88 over that side, but I can move. But he's just took out the artillery, so he's got to be a lot closer. Now, notice on the map now, but not the time, the Saint Emile is just there to the west. I'm, I'm screaming to Great Dane to push forward. He takes in the uh, Type 61. Artillery just misses me. Once again, artillery, a magical shot over E-35. Great job from that Lorraine. Now, I'm basically rushing in. I've got to take out his Type 61. He's got to be killed. I'm telling Great Dane to keep an eye on his rear while I take out this guy as I try and chase him down. But he was just here. But he's gone. So I keep pushing anyway. I know he's obviously got to run away. I see him. Take him out. Now back up so artillery can't get hit on me, like it almost does. So now Great Dane's watching the north side. The artillery is surrounded by two tank destroyers and in a pretty sheer situation. Great Dane's killed by the Agtag 88. So now it's me and my artillery against two tank destroyers. Oh, so now it's me against two tank destroyers and three artillery. Fortunately for me, though. They are lower tiers than myself, so I've got a good chance. So now I'm thinking the St. Emile's a one shot, I could take him out easily, and uh, that should be fine. I'm unsure straight away what health the Ag Tiger's on, but what I'm going to do is back up, try and use better gun depression over the rear of the vehicle so I can try and take him out. With this gun penetrating, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now that should be a one shot kill for me. St. Emile hits me. So I take him first. He's down. Take another hit. Now this gun from the uh, Ag Tiger is a fast firing weapon. But lower damage than some of the bigger guns what could be hitting me. So I wasn't too concerned there. What I do is take my time. Try and make sure I get the kill. 
Aim at the top of the superstructure. Misses. Take another big hit. Now, I'm thinking I can only take maybe two more hits. It's game over. Wait to reload. Load a premium round. And kill him. 352mm of this. I was thinking the superstructure. I might not be able to get through with a normal round, so I had to make sure. Now the two tank destroyers are down. I've got the three artillery to fight. With the amount of health I've got, the slightest splash probably is going to kill me. And I've no idea where they are. Uh, if they've spread out around the map, I'm going to be toast. Now I decide not to approach down the south because I could be basically waiting for me to do that. So what I'm going to do is back up and find another route. Now the simplest thing for the RTO to do now would be to either stick together and camp for me. But with the timer running down and only 4 minutes, they may want to push towards the cap. So if they do spread out, if one artillery does spot me, then obviously the other artillery is going to fire on me. That's one of the concerns I've got at this moment in time. So I'm basically trying to think on what to do. I'm thinking whether to basically approach the enemy cap from a different side or to basically camp in the back of ours. But then I'm thinking, like was suggested by the rain, that they may just draw it out. And I've come this far, I don't want to draw. It's all or nothing, you might as well just go in for the attack. So as I had to go down the actual centre road here, try and move it towards the enemy cap, hoping that they're not going to be aware I'm coming from this direction. They may expect me either from the north or coming from the southern route. Oh, if I get close enough to the enemy artillery, I can take them out without taking any hits from myself. But it is going to be sketchy, depending on numerous situations. They've got a massive advantage on me, even though they are artillery. Because they have got some hefty guns. And then, there we go. S21. Now, this is what I didn't want to happen. Now, I've been spotted. I'm not in exactly a good cover position. And if they're any one of them's to the north, I'm doomed. I wait around the corner for him to come. Oh, no! The gun won't turn! Luckily, he took his time, though, and didn't even fire a shot off, and I managed to kill him. So now, I'm trying to ram myself up here to try and get as much cover as possible. And then, wait a minute, the Lorraine. So two of them's come from one direction, so I'm not sure where the FV actually is at this moment in time. But it's still a concern. I can't hang around because, obviously, we're being spotted. I could get killed. Steadily trying to back up. Trying to find a good angle to kill this guy at. Obviously, I'm going to get proximity spot soon, though. And then, oh, the other artillery. Looks like all three of them was coming down the south road. Which, for me, is extremely lucky. Because at least now none of them is going to be able to shoot me from afar. Artillery comes for me. Easy shot. Now, I push. I know the artillery is going to come for me. He knows I'm reloading. Trying to get a shot at him. Take a shot. Misses me. He's trying to back off. And he's down. So, last minute was pretty sketch. Um, I was panicking throughout. I had no idea where the artillery would be. It was a big mistake, the artillery. Kind of sticking together and attacking one by one at that stage. It should have really all come at the same time. Or spread out so they could at least provide artillery provide to each other. Ended up being a Kolobanov's medal. Not the kind of Kolobanov's medal I hoped to get for my first one. As this is my first one. Unfortunately, it was against artillery and lower tier tanks on low health, but still, the medal, it's the Carbiles medal either way. Hopefully, if I do get another one, it can be against something which is more of a challenge. Now, let's have a quick look at the post-game stats. So, there we have it. As well as getting the Kolobanov's medal, I also got a Pescuse's medal for killing three artillery. All in all, it was a great game. It was only a first-class uh, mastery badge due to the fact that the amount of damage I actually did in the game was quite low. Uh, still got a lot of kills though, got the medals at hand and made quite a tidy uh, profit. All in all, it was a good game, shows the potential of what the Waffträger Alf Panzerfeer can do. Uh, very strong tank, um, especially if you get some camouflage crew on it and use a camel net, binoculars, etc. On those kind of maps, sniping maps, it's really good. This kind of map, I, I use it, I'm very aggressive in the tank destroyers, uh, it's just the way I actually play. Um, but hopefully next time I get a Carl's Bounce medal, it's going to be a lot more of a spectacular one than this one. 
Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. It really helps me out, and I'll see you on the next one.